Everyone. Good evening <laughs> and welcome to the live webinar organized by I6 for India and I hope most of you still remember me. My name is Hari Krishnan and I am one of the director of I6 for India Private Limited, the wholly owned subsidiary of International Expo Consultants, Dubai. We are on the sequel of our airline webinars, precisely the fifth one today. Photo and photo and uh, we are privileged to host the team from Sony. The technology that can possibly change the treatment protocols across the globe. So without I, I, making yeah. more delay, without making more delay, I invite Dr. M. Gopalan, head of simulation-based medical education and digital health, Ames Cochin. He also on the position of the project director of India International Medical Equipment Expo. He will now take the center stage and I request him to welcome our esteemed panelist. Dr. Gopalan, if you may please. Hello. Good early evening from Kochi. As I can see, there are a good number of attendees who have turned in from different parts of the world. A hearty welcome to all for this unique webinar on a new branch of medicine, a medical treatment without any oral or parenteral medications, all types of injections or operations to get relieved of the pain and associated discomforts. <clears throat> so when we jump into the cell sonic era, an old technology since the last 40 years used to pulverize the kidney stones with entirely new applications now. So I'm today in today's webinar used by Celsonic to find solution for the non-healing wounds, gangrene, intractable pains, as well cancer. So the technology believed to have its origin in rockets re-entering the atmosphere and naval warfare. The Celsonic story is one of discovery of how biophysics is able to cure illness. So that cannot be cured by drugs. So I am very much pleased to introduce the eminent speakers today, like our Professor Andrew Haig, the founder of the Celsonic technology and the machine VIPP intense pressure pulse. Will you explain all about the technology and on behalf of ICE Expo, I welcome you, sir. We have Dr. Lloyd Jenkins of the Budwick Cancer in Spain joined us live from his consultation. We have been treating all types of cancer using the famous Dr. Johanna Budwick natural alternative approach since the year 2000. Dr. Jenkins has written several books and articles on the subject and uses his knowledge in his clinic located in beautiful southern Spain. Born in Canada, he speaks Spanish, English and French and receives cancer patients from all over the world who have heard of outstanding success using a totally holistic approach. I welcome you, Dr. Jenkins. Now we have Dr. Sanjeev Gatte from Apex Meditech, the only manufacturing concern about this machine, machine that is Celsonic in Pune, India. He has been associated with Professor Andrew more than two decades. I have been instrumental in developing and finally manufacturing the Celsonic machine in India and supplying throughout the world. Last by not least, I welcome you all, lovely audience who have joined from different parts of the world to hear more about cell sonic. Now I invite Professor Andrew to take over from here and tell us more about the technology, the innovation and the future prospects. Professor Andrew, if you will please. Yes, thank you, Dr. Gopalan. And it's, it's my pleasure to be talking 
mainly now to India. I'm looking at the audience, Nick. It's quite fascinating, all the, ni all the names on the screen in front of me. Mm -hmm. It will be in India, but it is international. Now, India is important, not just because it's our headquarters and the machine was designed by Dr. Gatti in Pune, and that's where it's made and always will be. But there's two reasons why, and there are two reasons why India is important. One is democracy, and the other is Ayurvedic. Now, the democracy angle has suddenly come to importance because of the pandemic. It used to be that the politicians, the relationship between the politicians and the people was that the politicians would respond to what mattered to the people, which was generally the economics. And I always said to Sanjay, who, who understands he's got a degree in economics as well as uh, in electronics, and it's the price of onions in India. He said, no, no, it's a lot more complicated than that. But now everything's changed. Everybody, the politicians, in all countries, democratic or autocratic, and the people are all talking about health. And when the pandemic is over, and it will be over, I'm very confident about this. It might not happen suddenly, but by this time next year, it should be. Health will still be on the agenda. And what Salsonic can do is a lot that all the other things couldn't. And on that list is healing wounds, repairing nerves, treating cancer and so forth. Now, especially for India, the Ayurvedic, which means natural remedies. And they love us. They, they, they all say, yes, Celsonic belongs in the Ayurvedic uh, group. Because it's, it's non-surgical. It's, um, there's no side effects. But we don't say that we're natural. We are mainstream. And this is the message we've got to get across. We're not alternative medicine. In fact, the forces that are within, are coming out of the Salsonic machine, were there when the Earth was formed. That was before there was even an atmosphere, before there was water. All the chemicals that had to form to create life came about after this force, which is part of what Salsonic can deal with. Up in the ionosphere, higher than the atmosphere, is the Appleton layer. That, you're going to show us something. Look, that is part of what was discovered in Bradford University. And I've seen Simon, Professor Simon Shepard, on the list of, um, in the audience now. And Bradford, coincidentally, is, is very much at the center of this and, and in advance of it. There's a 7.83 us, electromagnetic field coming down upon all life on Earth. All life is responsive, dependent on the electrical field. If you don't have it, you feel ill very quickly, within a minute or two. And in Bradford University, there is a special room which isolates that. You need it for calibrating the instruments. You need to calibrate the instrument without that influence, so that when you're measuring the influence, you've got a, a datum point to work from. And this is called the Schumann resonance. That is part of Celsonic's understanding of medicine. It's not pushing away biochemistry. It's working with biochemistry. Some things, and we need this now with the, with the, with the vaccine, with the immunization. We do need biochemistry for that. But there's lots of other things where biochemistry isn't working. So the pharmaceutical people, who I hope are in the audience now, mustn't see that we're attacking them. We're holding out a hand saying, shake our hands, let's work together. We've got what you've not got, and you've got some things that we haven't got. We need to collaborate to get health sorted out. Now, let me take you to where it began for me is technology. In St. Thomas's Hospital in London, directly across from the Houses of Parliament, across the River Thames on the south side of the bank, and the Houses of Parliament on the north, and St. Thomas's is where our Prime Minister Boris Johnson was taken to recover from probably one of the biggest hospitals in the world. And on the top floor, 
they had a lithotripter. To me at that time, it was a new word. It meant a machine to break kidney stones. It was in a huge lead-lined room. And if somebody wants to come in on this lead-lined <laughs> later, you'll be very perceptive because nobody ever thought about that, but somehow it, it was put in that sort of room. And what they were doing was very right. In those days, patients with, with kidney stones delayed having an operation for as long as they could because it was a big operation. And the only way to get the stone out was to, to cut open the patient and extract the stone, and then you got about eight weeks afterwards of all the healing. So they put it off. And those stones grew to a big size, and they were called staghorn stones. That was the right machine to do that job. The technology was right. And then the principle of dealing with something as soon as possible was established, but I think forgotten. There was another principle established by that on the machine. The principle of the customer is always right. And what I observed was the customer's complaints were being listened to by the manufacturers and taking themselves off in the wrong direction. The machines became weaker, less effective. And that didn't make sense to me from my engineering point of view. I knew what we needed in the market. Now, the, the, the urology market, the kidney stones, was only part of it. I could see what else we could do with this technology. And an email came in from, from Dr. Gandhi in India. And it made a lot of sense. So I went to China. Because everybody goes to China if you're going to buy something. And I went twice. It's clean, it's organized, they respond. It didn't click with me. So I did go to India and I met Sanjeev. And it was one of the best decisions I'd ever made. Suddenly, India made a lot of sense. There was the democracy, there was the Ayurvedic, the first clue was the newspaper in the hotel. I'd never seen anything like this before. There was a poem on the front page. <laughs> the headlines would be about some politician who was being arrested for some crime. Hey, this is a free country. People will say what the hell they like. <laughs> it's not necessarily a sort of country I could live in. Many parts of it I could. It's different. But the Indians can handle that. And the key to it was... Sanjeev. He and I are different. You, you will gather this as you listen to, to what's going to be said in the next session. But we complement each other. Sanjeev stayed in the, this house where I am now. I stayed with him in, in Pune. This blazer is Louis Philippe. He's <laughs> Indian. We're already halfway there. India's very important. What I wanted was what I've since described as a hand-held thunderstorm. What Sandy already had it, I'd got a vision of the market and what we could do with it. Sanjeev had the technology. Nobody else had. China certainly hadn't got a clue. The European manufacturers were blinkered. They were only looking at the kidney stones. One of the first things I said to Sanjeev, we were total agreement about this, is what do we do about patents? And you'll be surprised. But when you think about it, we have not patented what has been invented. You cannot copy it. This is the skill of Apex Meditech. It's so made that reverse engineering is impossible. The price of the machine is not what matters. The important thing is the cost of cure. And in every application, I'm pretty confident that we can demonstrate that we've got the lowest cost of cure. And in many cases, other pretenders who think they've got the same technology haven't got a cure at all. Now, I think at this stage, Sanjeev, if I pass the 
the microphone, as it were, to you to say something about the machine. All right. Thank, Thank you. you, Professor Haig. Apex Meditech was founded 25 years ago, and we are the pioneers in manufacturing VIPP therapy system and intracorporeal pneumatic lithotripsy system in India. Since the beginning, we concentrated on exports and shortly it became an export-oriented unit. But now we are making the products available to the Indian market as well. We have an office and factory set up in Pune. Since 2000, our quality management system conforms to ISO 13485 and ISO 9001. Now about the Salesonic device. The device generates very intense pressure pulses, that is VIPP. It's an advanced version of shock waves. These are the acoustic waves in a wide range of frequency band. We can hear just a few of them. These are the focused waves. Many times, these true shockwave devices are mistaken for the cheap pneumatic radial devices. Those devices use a pneumatic hammer and never generate true shock waves. There are two main parts of the device, a console and an applicator. The applicator has a flexible cable and it is connected to the console through a connector. It's a special connector to carry high voltage. It is a handheld applicator. A sealed applicator is filled with water and a spark plug in it. A controlled pulsating high voltage is applied to the spark plug, which makes it to arc. An underwater spark at a high intensity generates very intense pressure pulses. This is also categorized as an electrohydraulic device because electricity is used to generate a spark underwater. The key factor is the rise time of the pressure pulses. The shorter the rise time, better the results. We believe Celsonic has the shortest rise time amongst the other shockwave devices available on the European and American markets. It is developed in-house. It took almost five years to make a marketable product. We have been exporting Celsonic to many countries in Europe and America for the past 15 years. Now about the operation of the device. The device is very easy to understand and easy to use. Set the energy level, set the number of pulses to be delivered and press start. A foot switch is provided for better control over the delivery of pulses. As it delivers acoustic waves, a gel is required to transmit the waves from the applicator to the patient's body. Apply the gel on the area to be treated. Firmly hold the applicator by keeping the contact of the front part of the applicator, that is membrane, with the area to be treated. Then press the foot switch. 
the device will start banging, delivering the pressure pulses. The device stops delivering upon reaching the set number of pulses. An average treatment of 800 pulses is completed within just three and a half minutes. If it is 1000 pulses, it takes no more than four minutes. The device is maintenance free and doesn't need any routine maintenance. The applicator has a life of 50,000 pulses. The machine indicates when the applicator is reaching the end of the service life. You need to replace it when it is fully exhausted. Now, I think uh, this is all about Cellsonic device. As I said, it is very easy to operate, easy to use, easy to understand. There is nothing much complications on uh, the control panel. You will see it is very user friendly. And uh, everywhere we have seen it is well accepted by the medical uh, professionals quite quickly. I think uh, that is all about uh, Cellsonic machine. Besides Cellsonic, we manufacture many other medical devices and industrial devices. To name a few, lithosplit, intracorporeal pneumatic lithotripsy system, digicarb, carbon dioxide insufflators for laparoscopy, digiflow, euroflow matrix system to test urine flow, Synchrowave Interferential Current Therapy, that is IFC. Cellsufflator is a carboxy therapy device and many more. I think uh, that's all about uh, the Cellsonic device and Apex Meditech. I would hand it over to Professor Haig. Thank you very much. <laughs> I was thinking about all the vaccinations that are going to take place. Huge number, millions of syringes and needles have to be disposed of, and that's where the Rakshak machine comes in. Yes. <laughs> that's you something know. to talk about later. Yeah. Um, so don't forget that. Uh, look, I'm looking at the screen. You must be there somewhere. Yeah. Come in, Dr. Lloyd uh, Jenkins. Yeah. I'm there, I'm here. English is, is perfect, it, it, it's good, and he's in Spain. That's because he, with Welsh names, Lloyd and Jenkins are Welsh names, he's a Canadian. That's and I right. think in America, you got to Spain. And, and when we sold him a machine, we'd been trying to get him to take a machine for a year. He didn't jump into this suddenly. When he got it, I, as, as the salesman in this role, Received from Lloyd. Look, he got the machine on the Tuesday, and by the Friday, he sent me this email. And it was what every salesman dreams about. It did more than he expected. He liked it. His patients loved it. I think he paid for that thing in four days. <laughs> I don't know why. Lloyd, where are you? I can't see you. Come on, you, you tell me your story, please. Yeah, well, the, um, basically, um, we uh, hesitated because everything that you sent me or that your salesperson sent me sounded too good to be true. And, you know, I've done a lot of research and I thought this machine sounds like a miracle, so it must not be true. But uh, I'm always looking for the best results at my clinic and I decided I better check it out. So I think I contacted a few of the other doctors that were using it. And uh, the comment that two doctors said to me, well, it's not a miracle. However, it's the closest thing to it. And I thought, wow, these people have no reason to say this to me. They're just using the machine like I want to. So I decided I better add it to my program. And of course, we focus here on cancer in, in our clinic. And uh, that's what we're treating. But we've also had very good results with pain. And we're also currently treating diabetes. And we're looking forward to seeing the results on that. Uh, one, oh, my cook, uh, we have a restaurant in our clinic. The cook had very bad back pain. She could hardly stand up. I just gave her one treatment, and she was fine the next day. So she, even herself, she was amazed. Good. 
Um, do you want to say more about cancer? Uh, well, uh, like I mentioned, we are treating uh, cancer, but we're using the famous Joanna Budwig approach. She's a famous German doctor back in the 60s. Now, what's interesting is we have, uh, with our research, we found there's four main causes of cancer. And so we address those causes. There's, uh, first of all, the main cause is toxins, chemical and emotional toxins. So we use a variety of plant-based remedies. We use two types of clay that remove all the heavy metals and chemicals, infrared sauna, uh, whole body hyperthermia. Uh, we also realize that improper nutrition has to be addressed. So we put people on the famous Budwig food plan. And we have a, a six week uh, Budwig diet called the keto Budwig diet. Uh, it removes the two things that cancer needs to survive. Cancer has to have glucose and glutamine. Uh, so we remove that from the diet. And uh, using that along with the cell sonic, we're absolutely getting amazing results. Now here's just some clinical studies to give you an idea. We have this um, Dolores. Dolores was just passing through on the way to France. She heard about us, heard about the cell sonic. I only gave her two short treatments one day after the other. Her CA125 level was 566 when she came to us. She got two treatments, went back to France, checked her blood count again, and it went down to 348. So that's 218 unit lower after just one or two, yeah, it was two sessions actually I gave her. So that we were quite impressed with that. Well, we also have um, a young Italian girl that came, Annalena. Now, Annalena had uh, stage two left breast cancer. She had two lumps and 13 um, uh, to 14 millimeters in the breast. Uh, she came for two weeks, okay? Now, when Annalena came, her cancer markers, uh, CA15 was, uh, was evident after two weeks, the, she went to another blood count test with cancer markers and the clinic said that we cannot see any cancer activity anymore in your blood. So we know that the unit needs to be 30 or more to indicate cancer. Hers came down to 20. Um, she's, recently, she's recently contacted me and it's gone down even further. I think it's something like 11 now. So she's over the moon um, and we believe the cell sonic had a lot to do with that. Um, we also have another case with uh, prostate cancer, uh, a, a gentleman from England, Colin Weather Weatherly. His PSA was um, 15. He came for a couple of weeks. We didn't do that much cell sonic on him. At the very beginning, we understood you should only do it once a week. So we didn't do as much as we do now. But even with that, his um, cancer mark went down to 12.6. Now we're doing cell sonic every day on, on the people that come. And um, so we, we're getting very good results. Just my final clinical study was with Ellen from the, uh, the Netherlands. Uh, Ellen um, has uh, liver cancer and a lot of pain in her back and her neck. And um, again, we did the cell sonic over her. Uh, she went and did an echograph at a very prestigious hospital here in the area and uh, the hospital said they cannot find any cancer. So we believe that using all our therapies, the hypothermia, we also have what's called the four in one, we do magnetic therapy, emotional rebalancing, uh, special supplements and diet, along with the cell sonic. Now, something we have noticed, we, we test all our patients with German and American equipment before we start. We check the hormones, we check all the organs, we check the emotional levels, the toxic level, everything. We are now noticing since we've added cell sonic, which is just this year, uh, that, the, that the, the test we do before and then after two weeks or three weeks, tremendous improvements. We've never seen such improvements on all levels. And the only thing we've added is the cell sonic. So we know that that is what's making the biggest difference on this quick turnaround, quick improvement. So um, we're, we're, very, we're very pleased to have added this to our, our uh, clinical therapies. Lloyd, thank you very much. I saw a question flash up. Can we be more specific on the applications? Um, um, well, basically, what, 
Yeah, what we do is, of course, we run our, we have the German and American equipment to test everything. We have the medical records that we look over. So we know where the cancer is, but we do other tests as well. We have bioresonance testing. We go right from the top of the head, right down to the feet, as it were. And it's very interesting. Um, our human body is much like a battery. When the cells are healthy, uh, the bat, uh, the the bioresonance indicates that the cells are spinning to the right. Uh, when the cells are unhealthy, the bioresonance shows that they spin to the left. So we do a bioresonance test over the whole body before we do the cell sonic, and in many cases where there's cancer and health issues, the it's spinning to the left. After we finish the cell sonic treatment. Inevitably, it all starts to spin to the right, which means it's in the positive area, the healthy area. And if it still doesn't spin to the right, we just give a little bit more cell sonic on that particular area. And we keep testing this day after day to make sure that those uh, cells in the body are spinning to the right with the healthy um, polarity that they should have. You. I just saw a question from Shifa, from Shifa, how many shocks are given? If it's a cancer, the average is 300, which is very short, because you're pulsing at four a second. Yeah. Okay, uh, what it we do, first of all, we, we do the bioresonance testing over the front and the back, we do all the way up and down the spinal column, because as you know, every part of the body is represented in the spinal column. So we do cell sonic all over the back, then we turn the patient over and we do all the areas that show that there's a, a negative energy instead of a positive energy. And I tend to do about a thousand shocks on a patient. Uh, by the time I do the spinal column, all the front, and I try to put it to the highest level unless there's pain and I bring it down. But sometimes I'm working on level 10 if I can. But often if there's pain, I bring it down to level two or three. Uh, so we we tend to give a, a good amount of this uh, energy to the body, especially the first time. And then the other days, we would only do the spinal column once a week, and we would do the cancer areas uh, every day, maybe like 500 shocks at level four, level five. You we have a patient, Barbara, in England. Barbara, would you like to fire a question at Dr. Jenkins? Explain your situation. You need to turn your microphone on, Barbara. I can't hear you. You need to turn your microphone on, please, Barbara. Or maybe the host has turned you off. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, Cyril, if you could uh, unmute her, please. Oh, you can't use fire. Yeah, you're audio now. Yeah. Now you're on. Oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> Dr. Jenkins, um, yes. I have inflammatory breast cancer, stage four. I've managed to survive for three and a half years, basically because my cancer is estrogen fed and I've been on aromatase inhibitors, which shrank my mets to nothing. I've paid attention to my diet. I've been on the Budwig protocol intermittently but I've been doing these things on my own. Recently, I had a CT scan and it showed that the cancer activity is starting again on the breast, but all my organs are clear, which is a, a real shock to me. Out of sheer desperation, I started researching and I came across Andrew Salsonic. There is a cell sonic machine in my area, but because of the Cancer Act, the physio is terrified of administering treatment. So the arrangement I came to with him is that I treat my own breast and he uh, treats sort of uh, shoulder, arm, and gardener's back pain. Um, I've only had two treatments, but I can say this uh, to the audience out there, it is so easy to administer 
uh, I just had a quick training session from the physio to, to do my breast. And I was amazed by how uncomplicated it was. Uh, and I must say, after my first session, some arthritic pain in my arm that had been bothering me for months is just gone. I still can't believe it. Um, but my main question is, um, I, I'm in a position of lockdown in the UK here. I don't have the means to travel to Spain to your clinic. Can you give me your best advice on treating myself, my, my breast, and um, sort of balsonic levels in general? I think you've kind of answered that um, just now, but can you, can you give me any, any more? Yes, if you could get um, your husband to do your spinal yes. column as well, put the yes. gel all over your spinal column, go up and down the spinal column, maybe give it 500 shocks, at level, level six or seven or even higher if you can take it. At least, okay. at least do that now, once, once or twice, uh, once a week if you can. And yeah. then just treat the breast area. Um, you're not at my clinic, so I can't do the bioresonance to see if you have other problems and other cells of your body. But if you do at least the breast area, perhaps under your arms, the lymphatic system of your arms, those would yeah. be the main area. Um, what you need to add to your program is detoxification because if there's heavy metals and chemical toxins, uh, this will hinder your healing. So what I would recommend is we work together. You have the cell sonic, you have access to a cell sonic. Now I could send you the keto bud ring um, where we starve the cancer in six weeks. We literally give it nothing to feed on and we cleanse the body with detox products then with the cell sonic, your chances of beating this cancer would increase a lot. And also the time to turn it around. You see, what you're doing now will probably work, but it's going to take you a few months. With what we add to it, it's going to reduce it at least by 50%, I would say, so much quicker. I have a girl from Sweden who has the same thing as you. She comes to my clinic for cell sonic, and I've got her on our program. Uh, we just did a thermography on her. Thermography has the inflammation in the body. All the inflammation that was in the breast is all gone now. Since she's been coming to our clinic, she's had about six alsonic treatments. And she's, she can't believe it. All the inflammation, you can't see it anymore on the thermography that she did just last week. Um, so it, it will help with your inflammation, your inflammatory breast cancer issue. Thank you very much. Um, the clock and the time's going faster than I thought. Harry, let's look at the soldier. Yeah. Um, uh, Professor, one uh, moment. Uh, uh, there was a first question was there. I don't know whether you have you seen that one. The question was, no, does it feel the fractures? Bones. Yeah. Right. Uh, the question was, does it feel heal the fractures? Oh, yes. Look, bones are easy. <laughs> I say they're easy, they're not. But because it was done right at the beginning, it's been done for 20, 30 years. When urologists were aiming at the kidney stone, the question arose, if their accuracy wasn't that good, and they hit bone instead of stone, what happened to the bone? Mm -hmm. Microfractured and then healed very well. And this became a tool for the orthopedic surgeons. It was they who had patients with cuts and wounds from skiing or motorcycling. But we then discovered the wound healing. But the bone part of it was established long ago. That's, there's two things that, that this sort of technology does. It, it is destructive and it provokes causing healing. On the destructive side, you've got the breakdown of the kidney stone, you've got the breakdown of the bone, and then you've got the, 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 the development side. The osteoblasts, new stone components, are, are growing. You, you must treat the broken bone as, uh, as needing a splint. And it will heal. It will allow eight weeks. And when that treatment is done, you're using full energy and very likely you will, you will need an anesthetic. 
that bit will hurt. And then just wear the, wear the splint, wear the cast, and it will heal. That's all right. Let's look at the at the soldier. Yeah, one moment. If you can pull up that photo. Yes. Now, if you were looking at that and wondering what it is, to quote Harry, when I sent him this picture last night, he said, let's have some pictures to show the audience tomorrow. And I sent him this last night and he said, you've cut him in half. What is going on? I said, yeah, that's exactly what I thought when I received this picture about six years ago. And I got the story, which is that this is a soldier, military hospital in Lima, in Peru, probably the best, one of the best hospitals in the whole of South America. He'd been on, on patrol and his legs must have been blown off by a landmine or something. I was told it was a bomb. So by the time they got him to hospital, gangrene had set in. He was in hospital eight years. Couldn't cure the gangrene, they couldn't stop it. So they amputated, but they hadn't taken enough off. The gangrene was still going up his leg and they took a bit more off and a bit more until here, you can see there's absolutely no leg at all. What was left to cut off to save his life. That was the time that Dario Rodriguez, not Dario Rodriguez, got a cell sonic machine. And he said to the hospital about this case, let me try. And here he is doing it. Two months after the first treatment, for the first time in eight years, Elmer, that's the soldier's name, was back home. He'd saved his life. Shall we just quickly have a look at the video? Now, Dario is a brilliant doctor, but he's not very good at selling. What I wanted was something from, uh, from Elmer. I, I need to just uh, put a translation over here. Just give me a moment. Because it's in Spanish. It's in Spanish, but the, just to see but, the... But I found a way. We can have the subtitles in English. I found a way. All right. <laughs> so, here we go. In the year 1978, I present the Is the video is coming? I, I can't see the picture. One moment. I think at the same time the video may not play. All right, look, don't worry about that. We, we skip that. Now oh, it is sorry. okay? Can you? No, I don't think so. No, I can't see it. And I'm seeing messages coming up at the bottom of the screen saying that nobody can see the video. Okay, okay, fine. Never mind. What it shows is, is that Elmer's alive. He's in a wheelchair. He became the chairman or some such title of the ex-soldiers group in Peru. But that tremendous effect on wound healing and gangrene is, is the ultimate. And, and as we saw there, if there's gangrene, they amputate. You don't need to amputate. Amputation is not wound healing. Now, what we, we could do is, is move forward a bit now because I wrote a paper on wounds and cancer being similar. The properties of the cells that are critical here. And that's explained in that video. Can we get that video of Kure? Your... I think when we are going for the YouTube, the Zoom is blocking that one. So the video may not be working. I, I can bring you the uh, topic you have just filling in. Out. Yes, look, let, let, we'll take the photographs. What you see there in that picture Yes. a special room at Bradford University, we call it an anechoic chamber. It blocks sound, but it also blocks the electromagnetic fields. And what Curie is explaining in his little lecture is that a cell has a voltage across the potential, the potential across from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell. 
This was used by Nordenstrom more than 20 years ago, about 30 years ago. Now, Nordenstrom at that time was the chair of the Nobel Prize Committee. You don't get higher than that. He put a needle into the center of a tumor and another needle on the outside of the tumor and ran a current across from a battery. And that stopped the replication of the mutating cells. That was the cure of cancer. He shipped it into America. He wasn't accepted, even of his status. It wasn't accepted by the establishment in America. He ended up very disappointed and shamed and gave his patents to China, who used it successfully, and then it's, it's disappeared. What was explained by Steve Haltiwanka in his classic paper on the electrical properties of cancer cells is that what the cell sonic does is non-surgical, irreversible electroporation. What Nordenstrom had was invasive electroporation, but the principle is the same. This comes back to the comments I was making about the, the Schumann resonance, the electromagnetic field. You see, we, the way we make that bang, and there's the photograph of Christian Bosch at Tübingen University in Germany. This is the top university. Tübingen is where Alzheimer works. We've all heard of Alzheimer's disease. And the machine, down that black cable to the handheld applicator, we call it the shock head, is sending 25,000 volts. In the head there, it jumps across a one millimeter gap. As it jumps across, it's, it's like thunder. It makes a bang. There's billions of volts coming down from the sky to the earth. Short of it. There, it's a much smaller one. And what we never thought about, shame on us, is the electromagnetic field caused by that 25,000 volts. It was playing a part. Now, in a wound or in a cancer, there are cells. And the voltage has to be corrected. That's what the machine is doing. So the pulse is killing infection mechanically. It hits a germ. We don't know what the germ is. It could be a virus. It could be bacteria. It could be a parasite. And that very fast sound wave, a pressure wave, will go through the germ and stretch it. And then it, another pulse, a quarter of a second later, does the same until eventually the damn thing is killed or ruptured. At the same time, there is the electromagnetic field correcting the, the voltage. Amazing combination, which comes as a result of that very fast rice time. That's it. We got right thanks to Dr. Gatti's electronic miracle. We knew that's what was wanted, and he could do it. You can't switch 25,000 volts on and off like you could flick the light switch in your room. It's just too high a voltage. Sanjeev worked out how to do it. And it's there in the machine, and it happens. The machine has no moving parts. It can last indefinitely, and we've got very old machines still running today. The shock head, because of the transference of electricity from electrode, from the node to cathode in the electrode, is a consumable. Technology. I'm ready for any more questions. There, it works on all animals. I, I said to a Belgian, I said, Look, we, we treat all animals, in, including humans. Um, we've got here Dr. Rodriguez again with a wound. The top left hand side shows gel, he's put some ultrasound gel across the wound, and the second picture, he's putting a over it because he wants to have a barrier film against infection transfer. And you'll notice that in this particular case, it could be that I think it's a lady, the patient must have been in a, in a, in a crash in an accident. It's not a diabetic ulcer. So the bone has to be held with those wires. But that doesn't stop the cell sonic working on it. And he's healing the wound. 
and, and, and that answers many questions. Is it compatible with all the, the metalwork? Yes, it is. There you see tennis elbow, and it's not painful. You can feel it. You have to feel it. If you can't feel it, it's not really working. And, and the one on the left is in London, and the one on the right, I happen to know, was taken in Spain. So we have to go. Can you bring some other pictures up, Harry? Uh, no, these are the pictures, what we got now. Are we answering everybody? I think you can mention about the wound uh, treatment. Uh, in fact, it was there earlier, but we didn't uh, talk on that part. The I, wound I just saw treatment. something. Is it construction and circuit details of the instrument? Can we explain it? I can't. That is the intellectual property of Dr. Gatti. And frankly, you don't need to know how it works. I'm always asked. What matters is what it does. How it does it doesn't matter. Now yeah. that is strange to doctors. Okay. Now there is a question coming up. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Lloyd would be the right person to answer that one. Uh, they would like to know if Celsonic can be used with chemotherapy. Yes. Uh, this is a question, of course, that many, many medical doctors will want to know. Uh, the simple quick answer is yes. However, uh, what we have found is that you need to let 30 days go by after chemotherapy before using cell sonic uh, because of the residue of the chemicals and also what it's done to the tissues. So what we highly recommend is that you start off with cell sonic. Start off with cell sonic treatment for two or three weeks and that will make a huge impact. And then the doctors can run their test and see if they still need chemotherapy. And if they believe they do, probably they would lead, need a much lower dose uh, than, than the high dose. And, uh, but the, the secret here is to try to do the cell sonic first, or if that's not possible, let 30 days go by after chemotherapy before you do any cell sonic to get the best results. Great. Uh, professor, we have a few more questions over there, if you can just, uh, uh, one I'm picking up, can cell sonic help to treat the ligament tear without surgery? Yes. I saw that one. Yes is the answer to that. It can work. And I saw the other one about back pain. It, does it cause back pain? No. It will heal back pain. Okay. And, and, and Professor Shepard, Simon Shepard, I just saw a motion, uh, a message there. Simon, would you like to add a few words? Uh, whom, sir? Uh, Professor Simon Shepard. Shall I? Uh, I will just find him. Right for the university. On my screen, he's in yeah, the he's there, he's there. Oh, I'm just finding him. He's yes. just written as Simon, I think. Yes. Yeah, he's just right, Simon. It is. Uh, Cyril, if you could uh, unmute uh, Dr. Simon. Yeah, he's uh, now, okay. And ask him to the start his video. He's not, he's not, he's still muted. I can see his video. Can't hear you yet, Simon. No, there, now he's okay. Okay. He Hello, everyone. Welcome, can hear you, thank you. I'm just looking at a question, what's the difference between electroporation and cell sonic? Cell sonic is the machine. Electroporation is the is the procedure or the treatment, as you might say. And what cell sonic can do are many things. As I say, it can break a kidney stone, it can break bone, it can do the electroporation. Simon, you've used it on a wound. Do you remember that big fellow? That we had? Yes, yes, I did. Um, I've used the machine in my lab at the university. Uh, which is the same university, in fact, it's the room next door where you saw the anechoic chamber, where we can do the RF optimization of the head. Because as Andrew Haig has said, 
the fundamental realization we had was that cancer is not so much a disease in the conventional sense. You could almost describe it as an electrical fault. And one of the uh, enormous advantages, as, as we've already said of this machine, uh, simply by the sort of mathematics of the way Fourier transforms work, the shorter you make the rise time of the pulse, the wider you make the bandwidth of the RF which is emitted from the head. And it's this enormously wide spectrum going up into thousands of megahertz, which is hitting, I believe, the resonant frequencies of the DNA and actually enormously assisting in the healing, while at the same time uh, changing the, um, the uh, membrane potential on the cell, because as you know, healthy cells have a very different membrane potential across them to tumorous cells. So uh, the way in which the machine works is multifold. It's actually treating the infection with the pressure pulses, but it's also working at a very fundamental biophysical level with the electromagnetic radiation. And the, uh, the chap to which Andrew Haig is referring, he had been, um, he was a police armorer and he'd been in some riots and he'd been uh, petrol bombed and his legs were badly burnt. And uh, he'd had these vascular ulcers for eight years, which wouldn't heal at all. And uh, he had the usual treatment of someone coming in two or three times a week to change the bandages and this kind of stuff. But that's only palliative care. It isn't actually a treatment. And we gave him some of the treatments with the machine. Uh, and it, it, was, it was extremely helpful. The, the wounds actually started to dry up and were starting to heal over. There was a corollary from that, which, which Barbara alluded to, is that the situation in Britain is difficult because you're up against the regulators who do not understand what's going on. The Cancer Act has, in practical terms, made it illegal to cure cancer without chemotherapy. And as Lloyd Jenkins has explained, chemotherapy isn't the answer. You've got to stop it with the cell sonic. If, if that doesn't, if that doesn't work, then there's something very strange going on. Well, I mean, this is this is really the whole power of uh, the cell sonic approach. At the moment, there's only three real approaches to cancer: chemotherapy, which has undesirable side effects; radiotherapy, which has undesirable side effects; and surgery which has undesirable side effects. This painless, non-invasive treatment is completely revolutionary and um, is, is obviously, shall we say, a threat to the established order. It is indeed, yes. I just saw a question, I'm very mindful, I do want to answer everybody's questions, I hope we haven't asked, missed any. He's asking about ligament tears. And how long does it take to repair it? <clears throat> You're growing new tissues to solve that problem. So you have to give it time. We can't accelerate growth of skin or nerves or blood vessels. It's nature's speed, not ours. But we can start it happening and keep it going. And, and uh, in many cases, it will work. If the ligament is totally severed, then you might need an operation to join and strengthen it. But one of the most amazing treatments, and I met the girl who'd had this, she'd had severed spinal cord. It was a car accident, and if she was in the car or the car hit her. But everything from the waist downwards stopped working. And it was four years later that she got the sonic treatment. And she could now move her toes. She was beginning to move her legs, which hadn't moved for four years. And I said to her, she was 18, she, she was 14 when the crash had happened. And I said, can you tell when you need to go to the toilet? And she smiled because she knew that I knew it was the biggest problem of all. It was getting her dignity back and her independence. She said, yes, I can tell that now. New nerves were forming. Now, I don't know exactly how, what was happening, whether it's, it's nerves end to end that are joining up or a network around the fracture line that's forming. 
that new nerves were forming. How it works, we've just got to, that's something we'll pass over to the researchers and they've been with that for years. What it does, we can see and we've got to get on with doing it because there's millions of people out there needing help. We can do it now. On my watch, we've done our hours worth. I'm happy to keep going. What, what is allowed, Harry? Uh, it's fine. It's, uh, we can go on. And well, there was one question which uh, I, uh, we have missed. Uh, that was on the, uh, can I get more details on the technical aspect of how it works in the cellular level? Additional to what we've explained about the rise time, the electrical properties, the pressure pulses. Okay. At this stage, I don't think there's much more we can say. Understood. I appreciate that the inquiring mind wants to know more. We want to know more. Right. But we do say to doctors, whose job it is to look after patients, is just get on with it. Surely. Don't, don't leave patients in trouble because you haven't got a 100% explanation of how it works. Now, I say to a doctor, have you ever bought a bicycle? You say yes. So you must have asked the shopkeeper how it balances. You've just done, why don't you fall over? No, 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 accept what it does. Oh, for goodness sake, accept what Celtic does. It's been doing it for many, many years. It's in doubt. There's a bicycle balance. Actually, it's micro wobbles, but that's another right, thing. Right, sure. <laughs> the difference between how and what should not be an obstacle to progress. Exactly. Got it. Now, there was two questions over there. One was with regard to whether uh, the treatment can be used for blood cancer. And another one is, is there any other cancer that do not treat with the cell sonic treatment? As far as I'm aware, it's workable on all cancers. Now, the blood cancer is a little bit tricky, the leukemia, because it's floating around in the bloodstream. Wait, have you had a case of leukemia? Yes. Um, in fact, I just put a note there to Sharil. Uh, basically, we would put the shock head on one of the major arteries, perhaps in the Ingle area, and we would leave it there so that if the blood would flow, flow through, we would be treating the blood that way. We would be doing that on a regular basis. Uh, but you see, all cancers, no matter where they are, what they're called, they all have the same cause. There's four causes to cancer. So if you treat all four causes, the toxins, the bad nutrition, the weak immune system, and the, uh, the pathogens. Uh, it doesn't really matter so much where or what the cancer is, it will be effective. Also, if you combine cell sonic along with the uh, keto budwig diet, where you starve the cancer in six weeks by removing glucose and glutamine, then really the cancer has no chance to live. Uh, so yes, no problem with treating any type of cancer, including blood cancer. Oh, and blood cancer, you concentrate on the bone marrow, where the cell production, everything is going on. So if you are radiating that particular part of uh, bone marrow of various bones, I think uh, you can control in that way. Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, I think one more came. Is there any smaller system which can be used in cell culture studies? Maybe for research purpose? No. The, the, this is totally, totally unique. This is what uh, Sanjeev Gautar explained. That there were many pretenders taking the word shockwave out of context and, and using it for their devices, which were not shockwave machines at all. Okay. And in fact, what we've got, shockwave's part of it, the, the electromagnetic field is so more, much more part of, of, of the machine now. We had to give it a different name, and VIPP is, is what I came up with. Um, you need to have a name for everything. Um, origins of it all are rather strange. It was said at one time that rockets re-entering the atmosphere were what were observed creating shockwaves. And the company that was making that machine in London also owned the company that was making rockets. They also owned the company that was making Mercedes cars. So they were a very big company. 
And whether it was that or not, I don't know. But we then heard other stories, going back to the Second World War, where you may have a sailor from a ship that was sinking because it had been torpedoed, then being fished out of the water, and no apparent cause of death, but he was dead. What had killed him? He just landed in the water. What it turned out to be is that there was a huge shockwave from the explosion of the torpedo, which had then traveled through the water, and what did all his internal organs. Now, that, that was slowly being understood. What we've got in Salsonic is so much smaller and weaker but the, the principle is there. What I did learn later at a conference was that probably the first medical application of this technology came out of Bulgaria, which at that time was a communist country, and it was their military that needed help from a physiotherapy point of view in the training of the soldiers. And the doctor put, put together a machine that did help. And I think it was that that was picked up by one of those big European companies. Now, like so many inventions, they don't just happen in one place. What Dr. Gatti was working on was kidney stones. And he'd also solved the problem starting from a different direction and the convergence has taken place. And it, it is working. Now, India is the biggest free market in the world. We've got an order kicking around at the moment from China. So we're not against anything to China. We've no political opinion about China. I have personally, everybody has personally, but as a company, we're not involved in that at all. If you need help, we've got the answers. If you're a pharmaceutical company, please come and talk to us because we can solve problems you can't. You've got certain advantages we haven't. We've got to work together, biochemistry and bio physics should now be collaborating and not all that okay that was one I think yeah. I thought <laughs> we're getting to the end of our mission Harry is this correct yeah we are almost uh, through now one was the one small question was salsonic helps in zoriasis and dental application whether it is helps say it again uh, whether salsonic helps in psoriasis and dental applications. Psoriasis? Yeah. Psoriasis. Yes. So dermatological condition, psoriasis. Yes. Which is very difficult to cure with uh, allopathic medicines. Yes, it, it does. And it, it, some very interesting results came out. They, the psoriasis in two areas on the body. So the treatment was done on only one of them. And both areas healed up. Now, that didn't stop another area, which had always been clear, forming psoriasis. But it was having an effect. And the answer seemed to be that if you've got psoriasis, treat it. Then you're more comfortable because that horrible itching stops. If it crops up again, just don't get it treated. Don't get it worried about. Now, on the dental side, that... I tell you what, we can just finish with Harry. Can you put up that um, report from Mexico? Uh, the one which, uh, which, which particular file? Virginia Marston. It may have been amongst the photographs I sent you, but she sends a list of all the things they were doing at that clinic. And, and one of them was, was dental disease. Okay, 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 understood. Okay, let yes. me, let me choose. Now, the first reports we got on this were a very extreme case. It was from France, Dr. Joseph Schukron. And the patient had osteonecrosis of the mandible. The jawbone was rotting due to cancer drugs that had been taken for about 10 years. So the patient was losing the jawbone, and of course all the teeth that are anchored into it. And the option was death or amputation. Now, amputation of the jawbone, how do you eat? The, the whole thing was awful. And terrible pain. And, and Joseph treated the patient for pain. And then found that the bone of the jawbone, and this is actually one from Germany, see it wasn't a one-off. Yellow is or was bone. And it reforms. Take some time, but give it time. 
as proper bone. And then into that can be put titanium implants. And the patient can then eat and live as normal. Now, on the gingivitis, that, that's um, the disease between the tooth and the gum and between the tooth and the bone, there's really no cure. You've got to have something that will go into it invisibly, which is the cell sonic pulses, and kill the infection, which it does. The dentist. You do it through the put some water inside the mouth, don't, uh, don't drown yourself, and have some gel on the outside and direct it in from the front, the sides, and you will kill the infection. It doesn't seem to crack the bone. I mean, don't over, it doesn't crack the teeth. Don't overdo it, but you will kill the infection. Now, uh, is there, uh, Dr. Sanjeev, is it uh, marketed in India already, this particular machine? No, we are just starting marketing the device in India. Okay, so presently we are, uh, I mean, Celsonic is used in Europe as well as in US. Uh, yes. And the production is happening in India. Yes, very much. And I have shared the contact details for everyone. Yeah, I'm just uh, sharing it once again in the screen before we go for the vote of thanks. Yeah, here you go. So, if somebody wish to contact uh, self <laughs> India, this is the contact details. And we have also mentioned, I mean, Dr. Sanjeev has also mentioned the same in the chat. And you can always uh, reach to him on that. Uh, so, Professor, shall we wind up? I think we've no. taken our time as allowed us by Zoom. Yeah. So, before that, I would like to conclude that uh, the job of the pathologist is to confirm the diagnosis by biopsy. And see, we are, we are, we are, we are having the, the biggest cancer institute here in Amrita. One of the, one of the biggest cancer institute in Amrita, in India. And we do have a lot of cancer patients. And uh, uh, it is worthwhile to try this before the patient is put for any chemotherapy or radiation. So there is no harm in waiting for one or two weeks and see the effect of the cell sonic, whether it has brought, produced any changes. So which you can understand by the various investigations like CT, MRI and other things. Also, blood investigations. So, if you are getting enough changes as we are expecting, so why don't we switch on to the cell sonic method? So, it is there, it is there all over India, it has to, we have to make a trial. And uh, since uh, Professor he has got a lot of experience in this field and uh, Dr. Jenkins has brought out so many pictures and various treatments, it has to be propagated. It has to be brought to the uh, various oncologists' attention and uh, this can be adopted. That is uh, my final opinion. <laughs> and one more thing, uh, see, it will change, it makes a lot of changes <laughs> in the malignant cells. So, a malignant tumor <laughs> can be made into a benign a non-cancerous condition and uh, uh, that is one thing. Second thing, uh, the pre-cancerous conditions like leukoplakia in the mouth, leukoplakia in the mouth and also non-healing ulcers, the ulcer that can become a cancerous, malignant ulcer. So if we give a treatment for that, this can, we can bring back to the original condition, original healthy condition of the cell. So that it will not become malignant. So thereby radiation and chemotherapy and even surgery can be prevented. That is my conclusion. Yes. Dr. Goplan, you make a very important point. Yes. Cell Sonic has, will not do any harm. 
Yes. You can use it straight away. Even if you're not sure whether it's cancer or not, use it. Yes. It's cancer, it will stop it. Whatever else it might be that's causing the pain, very likely it will stop that as well. Now, you do mention the diagnosis. To us, that is, at the moment, work in progress. We're not saying too much about it at this stage. We have plans which will make a huge difference if we can check everybody and find a cancer before the person knows they've got it. This comes back to a point I made very early on with the, with the uh, kidney stones. If you can catch it when it's small, it's so much easier. And we've got to do the same with cancer. Don't hesitate. Don't wait until it gets worse and worse. Just go and get a cell sonic treatment. It might be nothing, but I think, let's try it. It won't do any harm, and it could save your life. It's as much as that. Surely. That's great. In fact, uh, it's been almost one hour, 15 minutes now, and we have had a lot of information from Professor Andrew, Dr. Sanjeev, about the manufacturing process of the same, and Dr. Jenkins on the treatment side of it. So really informative session today. It's been really fabulous to hear from all these uh, well-known uh, people. And I thank each one of you, Professor Andrew, Dr. Jenkins, and Dr. Sanjeev, and my colleague, uh, Dr. Gavalan. And for uh, even to Barbara, you have joined with your questions. Thank you so much for that one as well. And uh, um, we hope that uh, more and more hospitals, doctors, wellness clinics will start using the technology and ultimately the mankind get benefited out of the same. So on behalf of ISEXPO, we are proud and delighted to have such a quality and wonderful professional speaking at our forum today. We are sure on behalf of you people, I, I would like to propagate this by making presentations to various hospitals. In our, in our medicine and uh, surgical conferences, I would like to present a paper about cell sony. With your recommendation, if you permit. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yes, Dr. yes, yes. That would be great. Even uh, I mean, IMS stands for that. When in the medical association, it's only for, when it is proven, we are taking it to the uh, yes. live stream, I believe. Because we have got an evidence-based medicine. Exactly. The allopathy system is evidence-based. If you say that is okay, of course, this is a scientific truth. It is not something, uh, something like a magic or something. It is scientifically correct. The cell changes and the malignant cell changes to normal cell metabolism and all. So it is a really scientific truth. So we, we can't hide it. So we will definitely propagate it. Surely. It is. So thank, thank you, you once much. again for your all of your valuable time. And we look forward to host you again. Uh, we love the audience also. So maybe in the next session soon. Thank you so much. Cheers. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.